the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Chapter 9, verses from 32. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Today, the Lord was inspiring me to preach about marriage and family. Now, this is Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, from 4 to 6 we read. The Word of God says, He answered. Can we read together? This is what Jesus said, directly opening his mouth, using his tongue, as an answer to a question that the disciples asked. Is it possible for a man to leave his parents and to live with one single woman all his life? Is it possible for a woman just to marry one man and live his whole life? What about if there is a crisis, a confusion, a difficulty, a perversion? Then Jesus opened his mouth as an answer. Jesus spoke about marriage. Have you not read the one who made them at the beginning, made them male and female? This is the word of Jesus. That's why it's in inverted commas. And it goes, for this reason, because God started family, God made family that they have to leave their father and mother and join together and become one flesh so what God has joined together marriage is an institution of God it's God who unites a man and a woman that's why the covenant of the marriage that is at the altar when we get, when you get married you say from today until death it is until death in sickness and in health in poverty and in riches in sadness and in joy you will live together praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord and we have to know this is now i want to read this is sirach chapter 25 verse 1 sirach chapter 25 verse 1 it speaks about the thing that God rejoices. Okay, very good. Can we read together? I take, I take pleasure, pleasure in three things, things and, and they, they are beautiful in the, in the sight, sight of God and of, of mortals. Agreement, Agreement among, among brothers, and, brothers sisters, and sisters, friendship, friendship among, among neighbors, neighbors and a wife and a husband who live in harmony. God rejoices in and he take pleasure not just rejoice he's so happy god takes pleasure when a husband and a wife live in harmony now let me ask you who is so angry and upset when a husband and wife live together in harmony go to church in harmony and pray together who is very upset and angry it is devil who wanted to break family Again, now this is Proverbs chapter 6 from 17. There are six things that God hates. Ah, from 16 we read. 6 from 16. Can we read? There are, there six, are six things, things that, that the Lord, Lord hates. hates. Seven, seven that, that are, are an abomination, abomination to him. him. God hates six things and there is something that is an abomination and we continue to read now from 17 haughty, haughty eyes, eyes a lying, lying tongue, tongue hands, hands that shed, that innocent, shed blood. innocent blood innocent blood means abortion God hates abortion it's a it's a mortal sin heart, heart that, that devises, devises wicked, wicked plans, plans. 
Feed that hurry, hurry to run to, run to evil. evil. A lying A witness, witness who testifies, who testifies falsely. falsely. And one who sows discord in a family. It is an abomination. What is the abomination? One who sows discord in a family. One who breaks a family. One who separates married couple. It can be a mother-in-law, a father-in-law, a stepmother, or an uncle, or an aunt. Anyone who interferes in a marriage and breaks married people apart is against God's own institution. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as I speak this about the family, that means God takes pleasure in family. And God hates, he treats, it's an abomination, anyone who, who saw discord in a family. It's such a great institution. If there is no family, humanity will be wiped out. It's the greatest and the most important institution of God. God works in the family, through the family. Now, I have seen many people not married. I don't say everybody, but I have seen a major reason for those who are undecided about marriage. After 38 years, while giving counseling, now I am 20 years a priest, I have come to know many, they have lost confidence in family. Because their parents were separated, they were divorced. So the children get this scar that they never experienced the love of a dad and of a mother, they were separated. Do we cause this institution to break and what happens? Even the children also lose confidence in marriage and family. Is your daughter or son is not getting married because you failed in your family life, in your marriage? It's something to be repented and asking God for forgiveness. We cannot give a scandal or a bad example to our children. If your children are not married because you are a single mother, because you are separated, because you are fighting with your husband or your wife, is something to be deeply repented because we sow discord in a family. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Parents have to give such example. Marriage is a martyrdom. Repeat, marriage is a, it's a martyrdom. You have many martyrs. You know, martyrdom means you have to shed your blood and die. There are, the, the, you know, the, the church teaches there are two types of martyrdom. One is, we call it red martyrdom. The other one is called white martyrdom. Marriage is a white martyrdom without shedding blood. The other one, they cut their neck and they die by shedding blood. That's called a red martyrdom. It's not an easy thing. Praise the Lord. Praise now, as a priest, I also wanted to speak about uh, my parents. That is the marriage, the family I have seen. <coughs> I want to share that. I'm born in a family of 10 children. Uh, I have... We are eight brothers and two sisters. Eight brothers and two sisters. Four of us became priests. Four of us. My three brothers are also priests. I'm the fourth priest in the family. We are ten children. My eldest sister Mary died and one of my brother is actually here in Melbourne in Australia only. So we are a family of ten children, eight brothers, two sisters and four of us are priests. And my parents are now 69 years in marriage. My father is 98 years, my mother is 88 years. They are still alive. They are still, by God's grace, can go to church. My father has little diabetes, my mother has little cholesterol, but by God's grace, by God's grace, they are still strong. Now, my parents, but I have seen, they were fighting every day. Not physically, but verbally. Because for my mother, my father is just the opposite character. My mother 
talks a lot but my father speaks very little so for my mother whatever she thinks my father thinks according to her just the opposite so she is thinking is it the same man god has appointed me or somebody else she is still doubting she is 88 years <laughs> after having 10 children after living 68 years together still my mother is doubting and you have to know my mother is not an ordinary person she is the mother of four priests she is a great woman still she is struggling when it comes to marriage john 8:32 you will know the truth and the truth will set you free my dear sisters and brothers my mother many times i have heard her when i was small making a soliloquy you know she is talking to herself my god how many good proposals came at the end this man came upon my head for my mother he my mother has put a name for my father it is called unmoved mover you know in our language it is called ananga para a rock that never moves because she is frustrated she has 10 children but my father is mr cool nothing of it same even if there's an earthquake he will just stay there without having any problem but my fa- mother is so much worried 10 children no food no school fees how to let them grow she is so worried but my father is not worried for me my father is a great man but for my mother he is not a good man what to do for their the wife's concept about a husband is so different so now my problem is my mother is always telling why this is this the man god appointed because he has opposite character one day while reading the word of god i came to know this is sirak chapter 33 verse 15 sirak 33 verse 15 sirak chapter 33 verse 15 can we read it together look at look at, at, look at all, all the works, works of, of the, the most high, high. They, they come, come in pairs, pairs one the opposite of the look other look at the works of the lord they come as a husband and a wife god made them male and female one the opposite of the other is god's creation again sirach chapter 42 23 and 24 again sirach 42 23 and 24 okay uh together all these all things, things live, live and, and remain, remain forever. forever each, each creature, creature is preserved to meet, to meet a, a particular, particular need, need. 24 all, all things, things come in pairs, pairs one, one opposite, opposite the other, other and, and he, he has, has made, made nothing, nothing incomplete. incomplete then 25 each, each supplements the virtues, the virtues of, the, of other. the other who could ever tire of seeing his glory Imagine if my mother talks 24 hours and she got a husband who also talks 24 hours. <laughs> I as a child I will not stop talking 48 <laughs> hours. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 14 the word of God says together for, for the, the unbelieving, unbelieving husband, husband is, is made holy through, through his, his wife. wife. and the unbelieving wife is made holy through her husband otherwise your children would be unclean but as it is they are holy so as a priest i just wanted to tell you your your husband your spouse your life partner is not a mistake he is the same person god has appointed for you forever so clap for your spouse right now God God never makes a mistake this is the same man God has appointed you before you were born this is the same woman this is Tobit chapter 8 verse 6 this is the mystery about marriage Tobit chapter 8 verse 
It's a prayer Tobias and Sarah is making. It's a prayer to God. Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Tobit chapter 8 verse 6. Okay. Can we read together? You, you made, made Adam, Adam and, and for him, him you made, you made his, his wife, wife Eve, Eve as, as a helper, helper and support. From, from the, the two of them, them the, the human, human race, race has sprung. You he said, said it is not good, good that, the that the man should be, should be alone. alone. Let us make a helper for him like himself. You made Adam and for him you made his wife. It is God's creation. Again, this is uh, Tobit chapter 6 verse 18. Tobit chapter 6 verse 18. It's a prayer that this married couple are making. Tobit, now this is chapter 6 verse 18. Can we read together? The, the demon, demon will smell, smell it and flee. And, and will, will never, never be seen near her, her anymore. anymore. Now, now when, when you, you are, are about to go to, go to bed, bed with her, with her both, Both of you must, must first stand, stand up and, and pray, pray, imploring the Lord of heaven that, that mercy and safety may be granted, may be granted to, you. to you. Do not, Do not be, be afraid, afraid, for she was set apart for you before the world was made. made. You, you will save her, her and she will go with you. you. I presume that you will you'll have children by her, her and, and they will be as brothers, brothers to you. you. Now say no more. When Tobias heard the words of Raphael and learned that she was his kinswoman, related to his father's lineage, he loved her very much and his heart was drawn to her. This is the advice angel Raphael is giving to married newly wed couple Tobias and Sarah. You have to know your life partner is a Appointed by God before the world was begun. Appointed by God. Therefore, what you have to do, you both have to first stand up and pray, imploring the Lord of heaven that mercy and safety may be granted to you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sisters and brothers, look at any family that is breaking apart. Any family that's thinking of divorce and separation, the root cause is just one thing. We have forgotten to pray together. We have compromised on prayer. We have prioritized our job, our career, and our studies or things of this world. We have forgotten to pray together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sirach chapter 27 verse 3. Therefore we read Sirach chapter 27 verse 3. Sirach 27 3. If one is not, if a person is not together, if, if a, person a person is not, is not steadfast, steadfast in the in fear, the fear of, the Lord, of the Lord, his house will be quickly overthrown. Once again, if a person, person is, is not steadfast, steadfast in the fear of the Lord, his house will be quickly overthrown. I come back to my parents. One thing I have seen, they pray every day together, 7.30 to 8.30 in the evening. Even early morning is the time for prayer. Morning at 5 a.m. Evening is with every child, every children. 7.30 to 8.30. Now I am in Rwanda. It's three and a half hours behind India. I cannot make a phone call to my parents if it is 7.30. They will not pick the phone. They are very strict even today with one thing, to pray together. Because they both are different. They have different characters. They have opposite characters. The only one thing that is common in my father, in my mother is Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Wisdom chapter 1 verse 7. This is what happens when they pray. And if they don't pray, they cannot connect with one another. They need the Holy Spirit. Wisdom chapter 1 verse 7. The scripture says, can we read together? Because, because the, the Spirit, Spirit of, of the Lord, Lord has filled, filled the, world, the world and, and that, that which holds all things together, together no what is it says. Because the Holy Spirit has filled my father and my mother. And it is the Holy Spirit who holds them together. My dear sisters and brothers, let no one misguide us. My father and my mother, they are both from a Catholic family. 
same background same history they their marriages were arranged by the parents they were both from practicing catholic family and they married in the church and they were praying together that's the way they survived do you simply think that marriage can work a two a man and a woman can live together and it will become a marriage and it will work it will never work it cannot just work like that two people from different background different history different parents sometimes different languages or nationalities do you think it can just work no if people have phd masters degree high education lot of money marriage cannot work with that without god it is impossible let no one misguide us any family that's why the the statement the the, the spiritual father say the saints say that a family that pray together stay together a family that does not pray together it will break apart let no one misguide you i know from my parents they are great people i have great respect for them but i have seen they were fighting even when i make a phone call i ask my mother do you fight with my dad then she say father son you know i am very old so i tell her so if you are not old <laughs> then she tells me you know my son how difficult it is to live with your dad <laughs> many times my mother said i heard if it was not for god and if it was not for my children i would have been separated she a holy woman with four priests is telling because of god alone she is holding on to this marriage this is the reality it cannot a human person cannot just submit the freedom the free will to somebody if it is not for god that is why when the disciples were asking jesus the question how can a man leave everybody and live with a woman all his life they continued arguing even though jesus said it it was their experience then jesus said this is matthew 19 11 matthew chapter 19 verse 11 jesus told him but he said to them can we read together but he said to them not everyone can accept this teaching but only those to whom it is given it's about marriage not everyone unless grace is given marriage is a life filled with grace and this grace comes when a husband and a wife when a family when the parents and children pray together pray together if the parents do not pray together it will break see i can say that i am a priest and my brothers are also priests because my parents stayed together if because of that differences if they were separated we could never become priests if uh, my parents were divorced i can never imagine i can never i can ever become even complete my studies the children are the victims the innocent children are the victims of the separation of the parents any parents they are divorced the children are shattered they are shattered they cannot just accept it even when we sit for counseling the children if the parents are separated they just innocently ask father can you pray that my dad and my mom stay together as a priest innocent children they don't know anything and they said can you make, give me special prayer so that my dad and my mom stay together i need both of them <coughs> sisters and brothers without god marriage cannot work with human power human efficiency human knowledge marriage cannot work without god this is what is happening even in this in our country here in australia the institution that is a big threat it's in big difficulty is marriage and family i do remember this particular person this is in nairobi only this uh, woman 
came and she said she's already married her one child now she's pregnant with the other one she so much wounded because her husband is unfaithful so she wanted to get divorced but she's from a catholic practicing family in nairobi and her mother there were seven children her mother has seven children she is a medical doctor actually but now because of this unfaithfulness infidelity of the husband she cannot just go on with this marriage it's so difficult so she came to get a blessing uh, the mother brought her and she's crying as she's talking to me that she cannot continue though it was a very good church marriage and they already have a baby now she is expecting another she said she cannot just move to this marriage it is so oppressive so while praying for her uh, the lord inspired and asked me what about your mother did your mother suffer she said father my mother had more difficult marriage i know and we all children know that our father was so unfaithful and he was so physically abusive and we the children advised our mother many times why do you hold on to this marriage you go separate we will support you but our mother said no god gave me this man i will never separate for your sake for your welfare i need to hold on to this marriage and i will never complain and this girl she said i have found my mother crying many times but she never ever think about divorce my father has beaten my mother i have seen it but my mother said god gave me this cross to carry i will never complain and she never she never told the children about the problem of the her suffering she just silently suffered then the lord inspired her that's why you are a medical doctor today that's why all your siblings are educated they are graduated if bequeath your mother has separated from your dad it would have been a very big pain for you if your mother has done that god also wants you to hold on to this marriage my dear sisters and brothers the lord said this is isaiah chapter 28 was 28 this is isaiah chapter 28 was 28 let's read this word of god grain is crushed for bread but one does not thresh it forever one drives a cart wheel and hoses over it but does not pulverize it just look deep into this scripture you are that grain but remember god will not crush you beyond your capacity there is a purpose a grain becomes food once you are crushed you will become a grace for your children for your family for the future and this girl admitted if we to if our mother did not hold on to this marriage we our life would never reach this far we approve it we told learn from the sufferings of your mother now this woman this mother is so blessed because the children are all in a well to do situation because she just humbled herself in her marriage sisters and brothers marriage is an extreme act of humility one has to be humble one has to be humble one has to be humble but the lord said those who humble themselves god will exalt them and as we know the marriages are been breaking and there's lot of challenges do you know that it's important you as a person who believe hold on to that one if one partner is believing the other partner will be saved i also have seen this uh, something very special that god always gives a believing person a very difficult spouse because that's the way god's salvation will take place one corinthians 7:16 is the mystery of marriage what is this mystery to save the other 
can we read together wife for all you know you might save your husband husband for all you know you might save your wife, husband, husband, you know, you save your wife. if you don't understand this mystery of marriage why marriage I ultimately we are all called for eternal life we are called to be saved how you can save your husband your wife it is to save a soul if you can it's easy for you to divorce to separate he because he's a difficult man or a difficult woman but you are not completing that vocation you know the vocation to priesthood is equal vocation to marriage if there is no marriage there is no priesthood if there is no marriage there is no single holy life that is why every vocation is a vocation for salvation so we are equally a priest and a married couple they are equal sacraments sacrament of marriage and sacrament of priesthood so this is a vocation and why this vocation as a priest is asked to hear the confession of the people and help them in the same way the married couple are called to save their children and save one another and that is why god will give you a difficult person so if you drop this person along the way and you say you you do what you want we have actually we have not fulfilled god's plan judith chapter 16 4 to 5 we have to know <coughs> satan is always against the institution of family that's why he's always trying can we read together this is judith chapter 16 4 and 5 16 judith chapter 16 verses 4 and 5 chapter 16 verses 4 and 5 okay together he, he boasted, boasted that, that he would burn up my territory and kill my young men with the sword and dash my infants to the ground and, and seize my children as booty and, and take my virgins as spoil he boasted Uh, we go back to verse 4 satan the devil is always boasting what he is boasting that he will burn up my territory he will destroy the territory of australia kill my young men with the sword how he will kill our youngsters with the drugs with alcohol with the wrong relationships and dash my infants to the ground he will cause abortion seize my children as booty he will make youngsters to be addicted and take my virgins as spoil that he will create as an anarchy a system where virginity has no value anyone can live with anyone any relationship physical relationship is be normalized we continue then verse 5 however this is a this is about a prefiguration about blessed virgin mary satan is always against god's institution however but the lord together but the lord, almighty, but the lord almighty has foiled them by the hand of a woman once again but the lord almighty has foiled them by the hand of a woman this is blessed virgin mary this is rosary the one prayer my parents never missed is a rosary when i was 4 years old 4 years since 4 years i have to kneel down and pray if i mispronounce my father will come and turn my ear <laughs> if i do sleep he will lift me in my ears i was very angry with my father <laughs> but today i know he was training me to be a priest of christ even without his knowledge because he knew is only god who can help they were very strict with prayer that is why 
or became priests from this difficult marriage because they held on to the holy rosary sisters and brothers do you pray together in the family do you pray as a husband and wife with children let no one misguide us no science no technology no idea no educational qualification no amount of money can save a family is only god there is nothing if you have compromised god if we have compromised prayer we have compromised our marriage our family and we are giving huge bad example to children if any child is telling father i have no confidence in marriage my parents were fighting every day i have never seen them praying how do i enter into marriage today the lord just wanted to inspire us are we giving good example to our children god knows you are different god knows that you have this different character but how can you connect each other through the holy spirit remember today as i am standing here as you are seated here there is one thing there is one person who is the same inside you and inside me that's why you could listen that is holy spirit we are all connected the one who is inside you and your partner inside you and your spouse inside you and your children is holy spirit when you pray holy spirit gets activated in you and then what does holy spirit does isaiah 11 from 2 the holy spirit is a spirit of wisdom knowledge understanding fortitude fear of god piety counsel the holy spirit gives you that love that you are seeking that peace that you are seeking that understanding that you are seeking the wisdom to understand what is going on let us pray for that grace and decide that you pray together you pray together sometimes your husband is not cooperating but you <coughs> never miss your prayer he will join you never miss your prayer with your children slowly they will be converted they may not maybe cooperate for some time slowly they will do the same thing that you are doing i met a person in uk he came to our center more than 20 years he was not going to church then his family broke his children complained made a police complaint against him then he had no other way to go he came to the church when we were praying he said i remembered this was the same prayer my mother was praying every day and he started to pray again he humbled himself then his father his wife came back his children came back and he said that which i missed is the prayer the prayer life but he remembered the prayers of his parents sisters and brothers let us never one thing that we should never miss is prayer i was in uk when i just came to uk some years back the one thing that the lord reminded me like this as a message to the people we had a night vigil in uk majority of the participants were migrants so in the message it was like this there is not even one person who came to this united kingdom without special prayers most of you made novenas chaplets different sacrifices took fasting and did lot of prayers to reach this country but after reaching this country do you have that same prayer life most of them have compromised because now they got all that they need they have pr they have good job they have money they have two car they have two flats then now they thought it's not important to pray sisters and brothers family is going to break down marriages are going to break down many people they are married but they one man said father i live on the first floor my wife lives on the second floor <laughs> that is not marriage i have my car my wife has her car we never travel in the same car that's not marriage let us pray for that great gift of prayer 
that is the base for our foundation for our family if our foundation is broken scripture says if the foundation is broken how can a house stand is your foundation is broken down you, what whoever you are let no one misguide you i spoke about my great parents they are great people i will say the greatest human beings i have ever seen in my life are my parents it's only because of prayer they are still surviving they cannot survive without that they are the parents of four priests still they are struggling then what about you do you take your marriage for granted do you think it can work without prayer do you think it can work with just with uh, you have money job finances no one misguide us let us promise to the lord lord give us that heart to pray together if your partner is not attending this don't worry you take that initiative to pray in a particular time every day and god will use you to become a great uh, uh, bridge maker great bridge like a repairer praise the lord praise the lord let's offer everything on this altar and sing offer to him